So I'm going to speak about the work that the, the common project we had with Marc Toron and uh, a postdoc of us, Mauricio Rodriguez Mayorga, who is not uh, presenting today, but so I gave, uh, I may I put his, uh, his picture here. Um, so this, uh, the name of the talk is GW1RDM because this is the name of the, the new input variable that he introduced. So we are working at uh, introducing the uh, one body reduced density metrics from the GW approximation in Abinit. So maybe it's worth uh, spending uh, some time explaining what is, or re reminding you what is the one body reduced density metrics. So uh, you all know that uh, the, the n body wave function is carries way too much information and that we cannot work with, with it directly. So that's why we are all doing DFT. And if you remember, we can express um, the, the electronic density from the integral of the, the many body wave function that I've written here. Uh, okay, DFT is good because once you have the, the density, then you can calculate many parts of the, the total energy. And for instance, you can calculate the electronic repulsion, the Hearty energy. But for instance, you cannot calculate the kinetic energy. The kinetic energy is not uh, a direct functional from the, from the density. In principle, it is from, uh, from Hohenberg and Kohn, but there is no, uh, let's say, no working formula how to write explicitly the, the kinetic energy from the density. And that's why we are all using the, the Kohn-Sham scheme. Then, if we go one step, one step, uh, 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 one step uh, backward when contracting the, the wave function, we can create the gamma function, gamma of R and R prime, which is uh, the same as the, the electronic density, but we took different uh, R and R prime coordinates uh, as the first coordinate of the, the wave function. And in doing so, it's the generalization of the, the density, so you can recover all the quantities that you could calculate with, the, um, with uh, the density. But in addition to that, you can also calculate the kinetic energy, for instance, because now you have different R and R prime, so you can calculate the Laplacian with respect to R prime and get the, the, the kinetic energy. You can also calculate the exchange energy if you want to. All right, so now, uh, uh, yeah. You, if we have a mean field approach like Concham, like R3 fog, it's very easy to write the, the density from the one electron wave function phi i and the occupation number fi. You can also write the, 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 the density matrix in the same way, except again that you have to take different coordinates r and r prime. And here the, the occupation numbers are the usual one, zero and two. Okay, so from that, now there is, let's say, there is no much uh, dense, reduced density matrix uh, theory available for the solid. But then uh, with GW, you can have uh, a, a theory and I, I'll show you in a, in a few slides. So maybe uh, you have heard about GW because with GW, we can calculate accurate band gaps in solids. So this is the graph, the famous graph from uh, von Schiffgard and co-workers, where we can compare the calculated gap within GW against experiment, and all the blue dots are very close to the diagonal. So GW is known for that, and Abinit can do that for many years. Uh, and for instance, you have the tutorial number one, GW1, that uh, tells you how to do that for, for silicon, for instance. But uh, what we can do, in addition to that, is that we can use not only the, um, the part of the Green's function that will tell you the, 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 the excitation energies, these are the, the poles of the Green's function, but we can also use the complete Green's function that we can get from the GW, GW approximation. And uh, from this complete Green's function in the first slide, you can, if you take it at uh, time equal to zero, so T minus T prime equal to zero, then you can have an estimate of the one body reduced density matrix gamma of R and R prime. So this is an expression for, for, for gamma. So we can calculate it from, from GW. 
it's just a byproduct of the Green's function. Uh, in the code, then it's uh, easier not to work in time, but to work with frequency. So I just need to do a Fourier transform with respect to time, and I transform this uh, this uh, Green's function taken at t minus t prime zero into an integral over frequencies, and uh, it's. For, for numerical aspects, it's easier to perform the integral for imaginary frequencies. Okay, so the frequency omega here will be along uh, the imaginary axis where all the quantities are very smooth and uh, well behaved. And uh, here, uh, we just the, the origin of the axis, uh, uh, mu, here is uh, the Fermi level, if you want. The, the origin of the axis has to separate the empty states from the occupied states. And that's it. So, in principle, Abinit could calculate the, the GW density matrix. So, that's what uh, Mauricio implemented in the code. So, if you want to get the, the, the GW1 RDM, then you have to start just a regular DFT calculation, uh, sorry, GW calculation using the usual one shot procedure. So uh, one shot means that we first do a self-consistent cone sham calculations, calculation with many, many states. And when I say many, it's really a lot. So for instance, here I, I coined uh, the n band 200, but let's say it's a the typical number of states that you would need for a unit cell of, of silicone or something like that. So from this self-consistent cone sham calculation, you obtain the wave function and the eigenvalues that are stored in the WFK file. So that's just regular. Then you perform a screening calculation. So you calculate the, the electronic susceptibility. Uh, and uh, more precisely, you, we will calculate the screen Coulomb interaction W, the W of uh, GW. And this, um, this W will be evaluated for imaginary frequencies as well, for the same reason. It's um, more smooth, uh, well-behaved, and so on, on the imaginary axis. The only difference uh, with respect to regular GW calculation is that here we don't use the plasma control approximation. So we need uh, several uh, imaginary frequencies. And when I say several, it's of the order of 50, 100, something like that. Okay, and then this will be stored in the regular file as a screening file, uh, underscore SCR. Then third step, as in a regular GW calculation, we will evaluate the GW set energy for here imaginary frequencies. And that's what you do when you select the option GW calc tip 21. So this is something that so far, everything was already in Abinit for, for several, several years. And then what's new is that now we can reuse this information that we have, the self energy, GW self energy, on evaluating on imaginary frequencies for all the K points and all the state indices I and J. And we can use them in order to produce the uh, one body reduced density matrix. And the, the final formula is here in the, in the white, uh, white box. And this is done when you select the new input variable that uh, Mauricio introduced, GW1RDM equal to one or two. So now we, we have the, the density matrix and we can work with it. So, and something that we can do is immediately we can calculate as a byproduct the density, the electronic density. And this is automatically done by creating this DEN file that now contains not the Gonsham density, but the density that is uh, that arises from the density matrix, the GW density matrix. And also, you can diagonalize the, um, the density matrix to get what is called the natural orbitals, and this will be stored in the WFK file. So I will come back in a minute on the natural orbitals, because this is very interesting because you have a lot of uh, fun facts about the natural orbitals. So once we know the, the density matrix for a given K points and, uh, and band indices I and J, so I and J are Kohn-Sham states and they uh, can be empty and occupied. And so it's just a basis to expand the density matrix. 
then we can diagonalize that. And from that, we, as I said, we get the so-called natural orbitals. And, uh, and the eigenvalues are the natural occupations. This now natural occupation should, in principle, lie in between 0 and 2 for spin restricted calculations. And they should sum up to the correct number of electrons if everything is correct. OK, so let's take the example of uh, silicon. So let's calculate this density matrix uh, uh, obtained from GW based on a cone sham calculation with PB0. OK, PB0 is uh, the most used uh, hybrid function that we can find. And uh, it's uh, believed to be quite correct for, for silicon. And so now this is uh, this block is a new output in in Abinit when the GW one RDM keyword is uh, set up to two mm -hmm. or one or two, let's say. And this is a block. You have a, a block like like that for each k point. And here I selected one k point, the uh, one half zero zero. And here we can see all the eigenvalues of the density matrix of, that we just calculated. And as I said, fortunately, we are happy because all these numbers that we have, they are all uh, contained in between zero and two. So this, this is the first sanity check that it's, it, we are doing something correct. Uh, but you see, the, uh, in contrast with what we have with Concham, we don't have just two or zero as in Concham, but we have fractional occupations that uh, that continuously go from from zero to, to two okay so we can see that there is a there are orbitals in green that are clearly occupied with an occupation that is close to two some of them in orange that are let's say quite uh, empty but uh, not completely empty and then all the black ones have very very small um, very small occupation number. Okay, so you see now the occupation numbers are real numbers, not integers anymore, and they, they, they can be from zero to, to two continuously. And there is no, okay, here it's an insulator, so we can see the kind of a gap, but okay, it's not like a step function. And if we sum up all the occupations, here we have the, the blue results of 7.99, which is not exactly what we would expect for unit cell of silicon, it should be eight. But so we, we are losing uh, some, some electrons here from, from, for this k-point. But if you do the same calculation for all the k-points one at a time, you see that for some k-points, we are going to lose some, uh, some electrons in blue and for some other parts you, we will gain some electron in red so and if you do the the weighted uh, sum of everything then uh, we get uh, the green number which is very close to the expected value so actually Mauricio managed to do some analytical proof that if we choose the number of bands that, are, that is the same everywhere in the calculation then we should conserve the number of electrons in principle so here, see, the numerical proof is not too bad. So this means that with the use, well, with the, the introduction of correlation, we had, we had had a transfer of, uh, of uh, weight from some k-points to other k-points. It's not like the usual uh, uh, occupation numbers that are eight, whatever the k-points everywhere. OK. So let's uh, keep on uh, working on the silicon example. And, uh, and now uh, we can compare the density that is contained in the dead file. So uh, by chance, recently, there was a, a, a paper, a PRB paper published by Chen et al, reporting some QMC, a very accurate QMC calculation of the density of silicon. So then I could compare, or we could compare the, um, uh, the density that we obtain from the new framework to, 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 the, to the QMC reference. So to achieve that, we first need to be sure that we use the exact same pseudo-potential. So here it's a non-conserving pseudo-potential, and I took the exact same one as these guys, 
because else if you change the pseudo potential, then everything is spoiled and you cannot have the, any, the comparison is not meaningful. So first of all, this is a plot that I, I created, but I, I selected the very same parameters uh, on colors and so on as uh, these guys. And uh, this, is, this plot is very similar to, to the one they have. So this is the density difference from uh, usual exchange correlation functionals with respect to their QMC reference. So a perfect agreement between uh, DFT should, should be zero, uh, just a flat line on zero. And this is, uh, so just a line cut, a profile along the, the big diagonal of the cube uh, in, uh, in diamond silicon. All right, so, and as you see here, uh, it's, it's quite expected, but PB0 in, in yellow is uh, the best functional to, to reproduce QMC. So what about uh, uh, the density matrix from GW? So for so me, you have one to two minutes left. Okay, okay, I'm almost done. Uh, just two examples and it's, uh, it's finished. Uh, so here is uh, the results we have for, for the density matrix, and you see it's quite flat and quite close to zero, so uh, we are quite happy about this comparison. And we can also calculate uh, total energy with that, so that's um, uh, because thanks to the density matrix that we have, we not only have the, um, the Kuhn-Sham uh, evaluation of the kinetic energy, but we also include the correlation part of the kinetic energy. And that's why here I, I wrote the, the, the evaluation of the kinetic energy and you see the large difference between the two because the Kuhn-Sham one is missing the correlation part and usually it's included from the VXC, not uh, from the, this TS term. And with this, we could propose uh, a new evaluation for, for the GW total energy based on the, the density matrix. And this should be closely related to, to the, the RPA functional. And in the next slide, I compare the results we obtain for silicon again for these two functionals. So this is one shot calculation based on hybrid functionals where we tuned the alpha parameter. This is the, the content of exact exchange we have in, in, the, the, in the input density, or in the, in the input uh, quantum calculation, sorry. And as you can see, the RPA function is very, in blue, it's very sensitive to the input, um, input uh, uh, wave function and eigenvalues, whereas where the, the new uh, GW uh, energy is much uh, less sensitive. And usually when people report RPA energy, they are reporting what is uh, labeled here uh, in a circle in, a, in orange. This is RPA based on PBE, but this might be far from uh, what you would obtain from a self-consistent GW calculation. If we had self-consistent GW, then uh, the two uh, curves, the red and the blue one should be the same. All right, so I think it's time to move on uh, because I don't have time. So we could calculate uh, lattice constant from that. And I think that's the first time we calculate uh, lattice constant of silicon with something that simulates self-consistent GW. I think that's a uh, first time. And then I just wanted to mention a last issue. Uh, if you want to calculate RPA or GW total energies, you need to have a uh, hardly fox starting point. And I have encountered uh, problems with with, uh, with the Kuhn-Sham starting point, uh, with the Hartree-Fock uh, starting point. This is a pity, but if you use PAW with the affirmed PAW data sets, if you do PBE, then the lattice constant of uh, diamond is just the same. But if you go to Hartree-Fock with the same uh, two uh, data sets, then you have a different lattice constant. And if you, Add VASP on top of that, and then you have a third lattice constant. So the, the question is what is the Hartree-Fock lattice constant and what is the correct PAW data set that we should use for Hartree-Fock? And they are not necessarily the same as the one we would use for, for PP. So with this, I just uh, show the summary and I just want to advise 
uh, to advertise uh, that so far the, the implementation is only working with non-conserving pseudo potential. With this, I thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you, Fabian, for your presentation. We have one question from the is the, from Camilo is asking: Is the kinetic energy density from the natural orbitals available? So the kinetic energy density. So, uh, so uh, I don't remember. I've seen your talks uh, two days ago or yesterday, and uh, I don't exactly remember the definition of the kinetic energy density. I'm sorry. So I, I think in principle we we could calculate it. That's for sure. Then so far it's not done, but it's clearly an observable uh, something that uh, consequence direct consequence of the uh, density matrix. That's for sure. Okay. So no more extra questions. I think Xavier. Xavier. Ah oh, yes, he's writing. Yeah. He's uh, <laughs> asking again and again the same question. Okay. <laughs> Were the natural orbitals uh, and occupations calculations done for solids previously? Mm, I I would say yes, yes, but not at all. Um, not at all from from GW. That's for sure. And then uh, I think to I, I need to dig on uh, on the work of. Uh, of uh, in um, R. D. Gross group and so on. I, I think they have something. Yeah, I think they do. And Mark is just mentioning the non-conserving only. But if you know someone ready to work on the PW, yeah, uh, we can ad advertise uh, that we have uh, a postdoc position uh, available for for a year yeah. uh, for someone that is willing to work on the subject. But so far, <laughs> no one uh, <laughs> jumped in.